Hi there, folks. This is Brooke Clemetsud with Education 307. Um, I apologize. I have this is my fourth time recording it. It keeps deleting it and technology problems. Um, today, we're going to be looking at probability. So I'm going to step aside here because it is glare. Um, we're going to be looking at probability. Now, probability is something that happens in our everyday life. And today, we're also... Um, going to be walking through a lesson plan that I created, and it's just an introduction to probabilities, so nothing too crazy. So what I want you to do is, if you um, have this link, you've probably looked at the document, so you can go ahead and pull that up, because it's a really great reference that we're going to walk through together. Um, and so if you look at it, we've got our standards. So these are, these are going to be a seventh grade standard, so we've got for math, we've got seven SP5 and six, um, and it's looking at probability of a chance event happening. And then we also have a reading and language uh, art standards as well. And so um, we're going to be looking at a book as part of that probability. So if you can see the, um, the areas are uh, chosen, uh, excuse me, chosen and written out. And we're going to be looking at uh, some different examples to help understand and introduce probability. So the first thing is I want the students to kind of get engaged with all of their learning. Um, from other classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell them, hey, make sure you bring this book to class today. So um, make sure my students come in with this book. And we're going to be talking about The Hunger Games. So The Hunger Games, if you haven't read it, is a trilogy, meaning there's three books to it. And it's about, it's kind of dark, uh, kids fighting to the death to win for their district. Um, and so how the kids are chosen is that there's what's called a reaping, where each of the kids' names are put into a bowl, per se and they're drawn out, um, so there's a chance, it's a probability that you will be chosen. So what I would have the students do is, uh, it's early on in the book, so I would have them try to find that page. So I know that the page is actually 16. So I'd say, hey, turn on page 16 and let's look to see what we can find. Now we have to remember that Katniss wasn't the one that was chosen. Um, she volunteered herself, but who was chosen? So we're gonna read about that. Um, but between this reaping, it's ages 12 to 18 year, 18 year olds. Um, but, if we look, it says that um, it holds, uh, I stare at the paper slips in the girls' ball. 20 of them have Katniss Everdeen written on them in careful handwriting. So Katniss has 20 slips of paper with her name. Now, she doesn't just have, she would just have one, but she chose to borrow against the capital, meaning if she wanted to get green for her family, she'd have to put her name in again. So there's a higher probability or a higher chance of her name's getting called. So if Katniss had you know, 20 of them, and there was only, let's say, 60 slips, she has a pretty high chance of it. But we find out later, if we're looking at page um, 21, that there's actually thousands of names. So it said there must have been some mistake. This can't be happening. Prim was one slip of paper in thousands. So Prim, her sister, was actually chosen, and her name was written there once. So Katniss decided... Prim's not going to have any extra names. I'll take the extra names for our family. Prim will only have one. So one in thousands. And it doesn't specify what number it is. We just know that there's um, anywhere between 2,000, I'd say, to 10,000 because it just says thousands. So what are the chances or the odds that Prim uh, would get chosen for uh, the Hunger Games? So if we were to look at that, we would, I'm not sure if you can see up here, but it would be, you know, let's say, Let's pick a number in between. So one, I'm not sure if you guys can see that at all. I'm having technology difficulties. No dry erase markers anywhere. Smartboard doesn't have the right technology. So we're just going with it. So let's say one, we can do that. Or we can do one over, let's say 3,000. So she had a one in 3,000 chance of being picked. So with that happening, her chances were very low, but it still happened. There is a probability. Um, and so what I would do is I would introduce this to the students like, okay, what are the odds? You know, and kind of talk about that book and let them explore it a little bit because um, they might get really excited about reading the book, but um, it's just a fun way to introduce them to probability. Now, because this isn't a real life thing, we don't have kids fighting to the death, um, I would use another example. So I might say, okay, there are 16 of you in my room. So what are the chances that I'm going to choose your name out of the 16? Well, there's one of each of you and there is 16 total. So we take the total number as our one in or two in. Um, so there is a one in 16 chance that I'm gonna call your name. So I can show them this by pulling up their little people stick. So if you see this, um, they each have their own little person stick that they've decorated. So I've got these up here in a cup. 
and you know I've got my 16 and I say, hey, what are the chances that I'm gonna choose yours? There's a one in 16 chance. So, uh, Mr. Cashton, he was chosen out of the 16. So there was a one in 16 chance. Now, if I said, um, I'm only going to choose a girl, so a girl is going to come up. Well, now there's only 10 girls in our class. So let's say I you know, separate the guys from the girls and I pull and I say, okay, now there's a one in 10 chance. So the pr chances of you being picked are even higher. So Delaney, so a one in 10 chance. So you've got one chance out of 10 um, that you will be chosen. So this is another fun way um, that I can say, hey, you know, try this. Now, because uh, students don't have access to all these materials and these resources, I might say, what are some other ways that we can do probability? So I'm just introducing the concept to them. It's, you know, one or two out of, so Katniss had a 20 in, let's say, 2,000. And I can simplify that. So if Katniss had, there was 1,000, there was 20. You know, we could, we could simplify, um, excuse me, you know, the 20 over 1,000. And we know that five times 10 is 50. So there was a one. So if there was a thousand names in there, I'd say, for example, there was just a thousand names at a thousand. And she had her name in there 20 times. She had a one in 50 chance. So out of every 50 people, she had a chance of being chosen. Um, if you were looking at it that way. So we can simplify those if there's you know more likelihood of that happening. So an example I might have is I might tell the students, okay, take out your dice. So all the students have dice in their um, buckets for when we do some math activities. Take out your dice. There are six probabilities, right? There's a one, two, three, four, five, and six um, chance that you will roll that dice. Um, let's say I want you to roll three. You have a one in six chance of rolling the three. Now I might say I want you to roll a three or a four. Now there is a two in six chance or a one in three rolls chance. Okay, so it can kind of be tricky, but I want them to practice. So I'm gonna have them roll the dice to practice doing that. Or maybe I could say, okay, if dice, you know, that's not your thing, maybe come up and take the cup and see what are the chances of everybody with the letter, with their last name starting with A through K. Um, so that we can sort out the sticks and then figure out, okay, our, our bottom number is gonna be eight. Okay, so there's eight people with the last name starting with A through K how many are gonna be chosen well, there's a one in eight chance, okay? So it's just a different way of looking at things. So we're looking at our standards of what that would look like um, for how we can use real life situations. So I would give students, I'd have them look at their book and they can kind of come up with it. And because we don't have a definite number for Katniss, let's say, I'm just gonna say 3,000. There's a one in 3,000 chance, that's thousands. Um, so that, that we can, that way they can practice doing that. Now also, uh, what I would do is I, Looking at my procedures, um, I would have the students write down because this is an introduction to probabilities and we're just kind of dipping our toes in and we can dive more into it later. I'd have them take out their whiteboard. So each of our students have a whiteboard for math. So practicing problems. Um, so we're not wasting paper, but okay, tell me everything you do probability for. For an example, I could list off some examples of, excuse me, I've got this right here. <laughs> um, Okay, what's the probability of being called down to the office? So how many students are in our middle school? Okay, and what's the chances of your name? So when the intercom goes off, what's the chances of your name being called? Or winning the lottery. There's 3,000, uh, let's say the lottery is $3,000. It's very little. Um, but you bought 10 tickets. Okay, what does that look like? What are your chances of winning the lottery with 10 tickets out of 3,000 tickets? Also, um, being called in in class. So this is our other example using our in-hand one. What are the chances? It's a one in 16 chance of you being called to answer a question or to work with me or help pass things out. So the students can write down examples. So they can include anything. So I want them to write them on their whiteboards. So write on your whiteboards, everything that you might, might do a probability. Maybe it's matching your socks. You know, and you've got a bunch of fun colored socks. What's the likelihood of you reaching in your drawer and pulling out um, a matching sock to the one you have on? So have them write down all those examples. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take a student's example. So I'm gonna call on, let's say, and I can use my probabilities right here. I'm gonna call on Del Shane. Del Shane, tell me what prop, what's the probability of this happening? And he can, you know, we can do it together as a class. For the ending, I'd have students take out their journals and I want them to record it. So tell me, um, use your examples and write those out, put those in your journal so you have them so they're not gonna get erased. 
where do we see probability in our everyday life? List it out for me. Um, tell me about it and how you see it working. Um, what are really common? What are some more far-fetched ones? And then tell me, what are you still not sure about with probability? What do you want to learn more on? What's, what are you struggling with? How do we look at those? So that way when I'm looking at journals later, because I look at journals every day in math, um, I can see, okay, this is what I really want to focus on. The kids aren't really understanding this concept as an introductory unit. So probability in real life situation, I would just look at, you know, putting it up in a ratio format, simplifying if need be, and having the students... Sorry, I'm... I'm watching sweatshirts for the kids, so it's a little, that was a dryer there. Um, so putting it up so students can understand that there is a likelihood or a chance of something happening. That's what really probability is. So if you've got questions, please feel free to email me or comment and ask. Um, the resources are here, uh, and I'm hoping to learn more about all of you. Thanks so much.